Hey folks, how are you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great Tuesday today. It's been a little while since I said that and did these Tuesday videos once a week. Uh, but figured why not? Maybe we can start them up. Maybe this is just a random Tuesday thing. But anyway, I got a list of stuff to talk about. First up is sticker swap. I haven't been doing this sticker swap thing in quite a while simply because I sent out a tremendous amount of stickers and it was getting to be a big expense. But <laughs> that trend just continues to just steamroll through everything. So figured why not? I'll uh, kick it back up again because uh, I do have one new side of the sticker cabinet exposed. And in my last shop, I did not want to cover the garage doors because I had this kind of a feeling like I didn't know I was going to move, but I had a feeling of like, I don't want to stick a bunch of stickers here because I know this isn't where I'm going to be long term. So I didn't put any stickers on the door, but the new garage doors are coming. So I figured, well, it'll be a better backdrop and I'm gonna be here forever. So might as well cover those with stickers. Uh, with that being said, if you send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, I will send you back a sticker, no problem. I did get a new PO box because we did move. And while we're still in the same area, I am closer to a different post office. So I do have a different post office box number and I don't remember it. <laughs> so it's gonna be in the description. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to remember that one. I think it's a small number, I think it's 33. Uh, so there's that. Next up on the list, uh, just some questions about the last video or, or in general, I should say. Um, the last video on my main channel was on the climate control here in the shop. And uh, several people asked what I'm gonna do for uh, a dehumidifier to take the moisture out of the air. <clears throat> Excuse me. And because it's crazy humid here in Mississippi. So if you don't already know, an air conditioner is a dehumidifier. A dehumidifier is basically a small, real small air conditioner. By cooling the air, you create condensation on coils, which drips into some type of container to, you know, for whatever. Uh, these air conditioners do kind of, uh, take the humidity out of the air and there are some condensation lines or some drip lines that are on the back of the back side of the, the shop and a tremendous amount of moisture comes out of the shop. It's a continuous flow of water outside. It's, it's crazy to actually see that much uh, moisture being pulled out of the air. But if your air conditioner is sized properly, it should not only cool the space efficiently, but it should also dehumidify the space. And that's where the air conditioner name comes from because cooler air is more pleasant. It's conditioning the air. If you have too large of a unit, then it's gonna cool off the space so fast that it shuts off and when it sh shuts off prematurely. And if it shuts off, then you don't have air running through it to dehumidify. So at that point, it's just a cooling device. If you want to condition the air, you have to size the machine, size the air conditioner properly. So if you don't already know that, now you do. Um, another common topic on that video was about solar panels. And if I wanted to add solar to the roof, uh, the whole shop could be powered off solar energy. That would be fantastic. I would absolutely love that, even for the house. <clears throat> but there's a problem. I don't receive, I receive a lot of direct sunlight on the roof, but it's at different parts of the day. And I think only in the summertime. Obviously we haven't lived here in the wintertime, but just picture this, the house or the shop, I should say, the peak of the shop is running, uh, the front of the shop is north, northeast, and then the back side is south, southwest, something like that. So uh, the peak runs north to south, basically. So on this side of the shop, I get sunlight on the roof up until noonish, I guess you could say. And then it happens to be on the other side of the, the shop. So if I put solar panels over here, they're only gonna be, only gonna be used for a few hours in the morning. Over there, only a few hours in the evening. And then the second issue with that is, on the south side of my property is a big tree line. And I'm about 15, 20 feet away from the trees on the back side of the shop. So like I said, I haven't been here in the winter time, but as the sun begins to go further south in the winter time, here in the Northern hemisphere, then the shade will creep up further and further onto the shop. So if I do put solar panels, just you know, doing some thinking here, 
I won't get a lot of direct sunlight regardless of the situation and I'll get even less in the winter time. So I'd love to, that'd be great. It would be a wise investment long-term. If, if say the, the peak of the, the shop, the, the roof ridge line of the shop was running east and west and the south side received sunlight all the time with no obstructions from trees, at that point it'd, it'd just be a perfect scenario for uh, solar, but in this case it's not. Uh, next on the list is Bits and Bits. So I'm starting to do a little bit of work for Bits and Bits. It is a uh, router bit company. Uh, they have a lot of different bits, including white side router bits, which I've been a long time fan of white side router bits, fantastic quality stuff. Um, but they also do an Astra coating, which is some type of coating that they put on their bits to make them stay sharper longer. So I'm starting to do some work for them and uh, they provided a coupon code for any one of you out there. If you're in the market for some router bits, check them out. Use the code JBATES15 to get 15% off your order and that doesn't expire. So use it up, take advantage of it. Um, next up is this chair prototype. So I don't prototype stuff often. Normally I'll do as much planning as possible on the computer, get it completely done, planned out, and then just build the first one. And the first one is all I need for the most part. Uh, I think I've prototyped two or three things in the past six or seven years. This, is a prototype. So you can kind of can't see, I'll go back over here. So this is my take on the classic like uh, nesting chair. Whoa, I forgot I had stuff sitting in here. So this is my take on the classic nesting chair. Hold on. I had to adjust some dimensions. So I'm using spacers here to get the seating height that I wanted. All right, so yeah, you guys can see it, right? It's uh, just a, you know, a little camp chair, nesting chair. And like I said, I'd use some spacers to get the back to come up a little bit because my uh, initial cut was a little bit too high right here. So that's how I had it, which it's just a little bit too reclined in this case. If you're not familiar with this design, it's, um, let's see. I normally do it this way, I'm backwards. The seat comes up and out, it's just two pieces and then the seat fits into the back. And then to carry it, you can just grab the back and walk around, you got one little thing to carry. Anyway, what I think is an improvement upon this design is the, let me set this back up. I can't do two things at once. Okay, what I think is the, the improvement on that is um, how it's assembled. So let me show you these. These are templates that I'm gonna start selling. And this is how the back, this is the, this is the back piece. This is how the back is cut out. And each one of these notches is a certain size with a radius. And basically if you use this template to, uh, you know, rough cut, stick this template on top of your workpiece, and then use a flush trim router bit, to get the exact size. Well, first off, you get repeatability because you'll get the exact same size every single time. And second off, because there are these notches in certain locations, there's absolutely no guessing or there's no measuring out to get these in the exact location. You just, you just simply cut the slats a certain way. They clip right into place or they're held right in place and then you secure them with a couple of screws and everything just fits It makes assembly way faster, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, and it's, it's a template, so it's very, very precise. This was cut on the CNC machine. If you don't have a CNC machine, you can use a template and a flush trim bit to get the exact same results, and um, I think this is pretty neat. Uh, the reason I wanted to um, use a template like this is because, or create a template like this, is because I looked online for a lot of different plans and versions of this little folding nesting chair. Folding chair, I think it's co properly called a nesting chair because it nests in inside one, of no one another. There's not really a hinge anywhere. Um, where was I going with that? Uh, the reason for this template is because I looked online and you see a bunch of dimensions and, and different plans from different people, um, but like, like this, for example, this, this entire radius is a 60 inch radius. Like it's not the easiest thing to reproduce out in your shop. Yes, you can do that. 
and then measure and all that. But anyway, I think this is gonna be super simple for people to use and uh, it'll be an inexpensive product I can provide. So that's the plan with this. Uh, and <laughs> I'm cheating a little bit here because I did prototype this and the reason I'm going to make this, this, this project is this, um, later on this week, I'm going to do a little uh, collab video with uh, Molly and Dylan from Woodbrew. Uh, I've known Molly and Dylan for a long time and we were actually planning on doing a collab project last year around this time in August uh, when they went on their first, um, well, I don't know if it was their first, but they went on a trip last year and on their way back, we were supposed to collab, but I had, what was going on? Uh, I think that right then is when my daughter wasn't born yet, but I think we got the news of the adoption at that point. So I think that's what, if I'm not mistaken, that's what caused um, a delay in this whole collaboration thing. So this has kind of been like a year in the making working with these two folks. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be this week. But the, but the thing is, we're gonna do a, a, a one day build, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna build something uh, that I could use. I'm gonna build something that they can use. And of course, we'll promote the other videos on, on, on each channel, you know? And it's supposed to be like a one day build challenge. Well, I'm cheating a little bit because I'm doing all of the prototyping and, and all the planning right now. Uh, so that when they get here, I can knock one of these out super quick as my one day project, you know? Um, but <laughs> it'll just be this, it'll be the same thing as if somebody buys one of these templates and, it, and, as, soon as, it, and as soon as it arrives in the mail, they make it in that same day. So I, so I don't think it's cheating that much, but I am doing a lot of the planning and make, making sure it all works. What else on the list? Floor mats. Another common topic from the last, well, from a while on this shop series is, Am I going to add any floor mats to the shop? Similar to the example I keep getting is Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer. He's got floor mats in his shop. No, I'm not going to. Um, simply because I don't, I don't need them. I don't really stand in one place. And that's when I find that I need a floor mat is if I'm standing in one place for a very long time. Even if I'm sanding or something, I'm gonna be moving around a little bit. And at that point, it doesn't bother me. Yes, this is concrete. Um, but uh, I've come to, to the realization that the problem for me anyway, everyone's different, but the problem for me is too much cushion. And I think that might sound crazy. I've been wearing tennis shoes for tennis shoes in, in the summertime and boots in the wintertime for years and years and years, right? Um, and always as they get wore, wore down or the thinner soles or whatever, I need, more, need to replace them for th more cushion, right? Well, since I moved to this shop, uh, it's all concrete, which is hard on your feet. Same as the last shop. But the contractor that I hired to do some of the, the wall framing and insulation, he was wearing Crocs, all right? And I'm like, dude, you can't be wearing Crocs and doing construction work. That's crazy. And he said, I know, you know it's crazy, whatever, but uh, his back doesn't hurt while, while wearing them. His back hurts with, with boots and shoes. So it's like, huh, that's interesting. I like to walk around barefoot in the house. So what I did is I did a little searching around online and I found these particular shoes and everyone makes fun of me because these shoes, they're, they, they're ugly and they're, they're weird on the, on the top here, right? <laughs> but they're, the sole is crazy thin. You still have some like grippiness on the bottom, but they're like, um, if you've ever worn water shoes, you know how, well, you know what I'm talking about? Like the top is like that really airy type material and then the, there's there's like no support at all it's just like a thin layer of rubber on the bottom this is like a water shoe without water so i switched to wearing these and man i tell you what i can wear i can go out in the shop a lot longer without my feet hurting at all Ugh, hold on without my feet hurting at all i look kind of goofy in those shoes i don't really care uh, but they're, they're like minimalistic shoes to kind of simulate walking barefoot. So I'll have a link down in the description if anyone's interested. I think they're awesome shoes. They look goofy and you'll get a lot of people like scratching their head like, what are those? Because they look like water shoes, but they're super lightweight and they allow me to uh, stay on my feet longer. So there's that. Uh, next up is a CNC cart. So a lot of people asked, what the uh, generic shop project, I'm gonna roll you around so I don't get sick. What the generic shop project was. Can't, oh, I was about to say you can't do this with a tripod, but you can do that with a tripod, run into stuff. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. 
I, I said in my last video, I was making some generic shop projects. One of them is this CNC cart. And let me spin you around, turn you like that. That cart is what I was talking about. All right. See, don't these look goofy on my feet? Anyway, uh, shop cart for the CNC machine. And it's just basic CNC necessities. This, I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with this. So as my needs change, that'll change. But I've got my controller up here. What is hitting? Got my wrenches to change the bit. My controller up here, everything goes through this hole. So there's no extra wires up here. <laughs> there's no extra wires up here. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. There's no extra wires up here in the way. And then they all come in through this hole in the backside right here. And then we've got another hole on this side. So the, the mouse wire goes underneath, pops up right here. Anyway, it's a nice little clean install or clean cabinet, I should say, uh, for me to work. And then also, if you got a CNC machine, put a fire extinguisher close by. I used to run a four foot by eight foot Como CNC router in a production environment at Ashley Furniture. And my head's cut off at Ashley Furniture. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun today. And uh, there, was, there was quite a few little instances where a fire extinguisher was almost necessary to put out a fire and such. So anyway, fire extinguisher, the two wrenches for changing out bits, a little magnet strip in here for some stuff like my uh, dial indicator or caliper, whatever the heck that thing's called. I need some more coffee, you guys. All right, so I'm gonna wheel you around again, back to where I was. I'm still using that uh, concrete bucket pod thingy, camera studio thingy that I made. And it works really, really well. So let's see, I've got a certain spot on the floor already. There we go. There we go. All right. Just moved you over here to say, <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching. You guys take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later.